Good evening, folks. Tonight we're answering two questions on the grand solar minimum. Many had predicted it would happen this sunspot cycle. We tried to cut that off and show the facts several years ago, but the steam in the topic has continued churning. This is critical because during grand solar minimum, the temperatures on Earth are expected to drop considerably. During the last one in the 1600s, it was Europe that took the worst of it, where temperatures were vastly lower than today, and where million death famines were, sadly, less infrequent than humans would like. When we said it was not on deck for this solar cycle 25, it was a good news prediction, but oh boy did we take a beating from those who had already jumped on the bandwagon, especially the fans of Dr. Zarkova. Of course, here we are in solar cycle 25 and there's no shortage of sunspots. In fact, we are well above the marks of the last sunspot cycle at this stage of the curve, and we are still going up. So, let's answer two questions. How do we know what the next cycle will bring, and what causes the Earth-facing solar quiet? The first one is much easier, and the answer to that is the solar polar magnetic fields. These almost invariably tell you how powerful the next sunspot cycle is going to be within a few years after the polar field reversal. Remember, the polar field reversal is sunspot maximum, so in fact, this chart goes up and down on the 11-year cycle, but does so oppositely of the sunspots, with the bulges of higher polar magnetism during sunspot minimum. By the way, this chart is of data from Wilcox Solar Observatory at Stanford, compiled by Solon.info. Now you can see on the far right curves that they will soon go into reversal as we reach sunspot maximum in the next couple years. We began saying that grand solar minimum would not arrive just yet around here. By 2016, it was clear the sun was going to have enough juice to avoid the grand minimum in cycle 25, even though we hadn't even entered the deep minimum of cycle 24 yet. From this cycle, we can say, again, this cycle should peak somewhere in the next couple of years, but it won't be until the minimum of the cycle begins, around 2027 to 2029, that we can judge whether or not cycle 26 has a chance to descend into grand minimum conditions. Now. The second question is much harder. What we've dubbed as the Earth-facing solar quiet, something present in the lead-up to the last grand solar minimum, has definitely arrived. If you haven't noticed a disproportionate number of solar blasts do seem to happen away from the Earth, like our planet is somehow lucky. These videos are just a short list of the times we have pointed it out and discussed it, but a good question is why does this happen, and frankly there's nothing in mainstream physics that would explain it. I'll keep this quick, and even I think my best explanation is a little crazy. The answer is human consciousness. There is no question that our brain waves interact with the Earth and our surroundings, and in fact, they are low frequency enough that they blast from our brains into space and beyond the Earth. Now, Just before the Maunder Minimum, the last grand solar minimum, humans recognized that the heavens didn't revolve around the Earth, but that we orbit the Sun, and it was the central powerhouse in the solar system. The world looked at the sun in a new, majestically powerful way, and it went to sleep. This was well documented in the Maunders book. Fast forward to today. In 2010, maybe a few thousand people were watching the sun, with few knowing how badly it could take a toll on our power grids and way of life. Then, Solar Dynamics Observatory launched, and all of a sudden, there are millions watching, and millions who know what the sun can do. It's going to sleep once again. And the only reason I even dare to suggest this crazy idea is because I know that the placebo effect is magic. You think something, and all of a sudden the physics and chemistry and biology don't matter, and your brain waves change the outcome in defiance of expected science. Knowing that our brain waves are low frequency and interact with Earth's magnetic field in the solar system allows one to take that extra step. I hope this was a bit informative, at least on the first part, the cycle strength prediction. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.